Hey, what's up guys? So we're here at SEMA, and I'm sitting here with some of the head honchos here at Escort. And some of you guys may have heard, we've got uh, some, man uh, some new management here at the company. And uh, I'm actually curious about kind of what this means for the new products, the future of the company, all that kind of stuff. So with that said, would you guys like to maybe introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about yourselves? Sure. So, Ladies first. Thank you. So I'm Gail Babbitt. I'm the Chief Financial and Operating Officer. Chris Calgar, Chief Executive Officer of Cedar Electronics. And uh, Manuel Jaime, uh, Manny, I go by Manny, uh, I'm the Chief uh, Technology Officer. Perfect. I'm Vortex, I don't work at Escort. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so we've got uh, some new people at the company and thank you, it's yep. good Our pleasure. to like, sit down with you guys and chat with you guys. So I'm curious now. I watch you on YouTube yeah, all the time. You. I make YouTube videos, <laughs> I usually talk to cameras okay. I talk to people. So I'm curious, I guess from you guys, like your take now that you guys are running the ship here at Escort, like, what do you guys envision as far as what you'd like to bring to Escort, the future of the company, the product line, and ultimately what we as your customers and consumers can experience? Yeah, it's a good question. So I think, um, you know, kind of probably the best way to look at, at how we're transforming the, the product and technology strategy, um, and you know, I'll let Manuel elaborate from there, is starting with a very simple notion of thinking about the product that we're selling differently. So, um, you know, heretofore we were Escort, we're in the radar detector business, right? whether that's windshield bound, custom install, over on the Cobra side, which is also part of the Cedar family, dash cameras, CB radios, you know, we, we're thought of a, a company in terms of, of discrete devices. Um, and I think the, the mindset of this new, new leadership team and new technology team is to, to think more broadly and a little more modern about what we sell and, and how we sell it. And, and kind of at the core of that is um, we fundamentally view ourselves as more of an information um, company. And so by that, I mean, it's not the radar detector that we're selling so much or the radar detector itself that people are looking to buy. So only so many people are interested in sticking a piece of plastic to their, to their windshield. What they're interested in is the alert. They're interested in being alerted, having the information of a police presence um, that they're being monitored, be that by radar or laser. And so um, it's less about the device itself and it's more about um, its ability to accurately and timely alert you um, in, in a way that, that that information is best digested by you. And so when you think about um, the detection industry in that way, you kind of really start to open up your, your horizons and you're thinking about um, how these um, how these devices can all be interconnected and, and how these devices can share information not only with each other but ultimately with, with end users. Um, similarly in the, the dash camera space and just today we launched the, um, the new M1 accessory for escort radar detectors. It's a dash camera, right, that, that seamlessly mounts into, into the radar detector unit and so we're obviously selling it as a, as a dash camera but it's yet the next turn of the crank in terms of how we're thinking about um, the broader aspect of, of protecting users um, differently. So similarly to the, the product from a detector is the alert, um, we think the product from a dash cam is the video, right? So what you're more interested in necessarily than having another piece of plastic stuck to your windshield is you're interested in that one meaningful clip, whether you were in an accident or you witnessed fraud or you're in Russia and you saw a meteor coming through and you just wanted to post it to social media. The product is really the video clip that, that's curated and comes out of that camera. And so being able to combine those, those two technologies and think about them differently, it's about alerting. It's about capturing information, capturing and curating video to provide an even greater sense of protection and, you know, just versus just the, the radar or laser alert combine it with, with video and the, the richer information that you can get from that experience is how we're transforming the way we think about our company really across both brands, not just the Escort brand, but, but the Cobra brand, um, you know, in the, the, the products that we have over in, in the next booth, really transforming our, our thinking. And so with the first kind of 90 to 120 days of the new leadership team and really thinking about things in that different way, we said, okay, now what does that actually mean then in terms of the roadmap? How are we going to how are we going to design detection devices and technology differently and provide better and richer uh, user experiences with this new way of thinking about things? And same with dash cameras and video, and quite frankly, even the same with CB radios over and, and other um, 
communication devices over in the in the Cobra product lineup. So really just starting off with transformational thinking about how how people interact and how people like to receive information this day and age, and then distill it back down through the, the product roadmap. So once we kind of get through that higher level envisioning, you know, then we actually have to kick it over to people a lot smarter than me, like Manuel and his team, to figure out and say, okay, how do we actually translate that then through a product vision? Um, you know, in terms of the, the devices and the categories that, that we're in today and devices and categories that we want to be in in the future. So, a so, uh, couple thoughts on that. Right. Um, so, I think this, this pivot that, that Chris alludes to is, is, is critical, right? It, is the, what, what the nature of the product is becomes an important mindset. I think not just for, for us internally, but also in terms of, of uh, our, our customers and our users. Uh, and frankly, it's probably easier for them because they'll go, oh, yeah, but of course, that's, that's, that's why I buy this, is I want the alerts, or that's why I buy this, is I want the video. But, but it's, yeah. been, it's been a really good, very well-received, I think, shift internally as we're thinking about existing and new products. And, and what that has allowed us to do is to, to think really about families of products, about the community that the products create, and about the ecosystems that they develop. So, and it translates both in terms of what we, the products that we have now, the ones we're, that we're developing, but also how we work on those products. So, simple thing, but having a, a common engineering group or a common product group where the radar, the, the radar team is the radar team, whether it's a Cobra radar detector or an Esco radar detector. And also the acknowledgement that the CB Cobra product team has a tight connection with the alerts that are coming out of the other products. And so that, that's, that's, I think, also changing a little bit in terms of how we think about the products, how we develop them, and how we go, uh, how we go forward. And in that context, we've, we've sort of created a couple key anchors. The first one was a reiteration that, no, we, we're, we're still a hardware company. There was a little bit of a, oh my God, are we a software company now? We're not gonna make hardware? And, yeah. and, and it, we were very clear about that, no. The hardware was there is, over that. Yeah. The hardware yeah. is a critical enabler. Sure. But it's not the only piece of the puzzle. Yes. But it's absolutely critical, right? It's where it's where the, the, the heritage is, it's where a lot of the expertise is, it's where a lot of the information originates, right? So so it doesn't you know, it doesn't become less important. It's just not in an island of in and of itself. So the first piece. Second piece, and you're seeing you know, you saw it with the Max three sixty C increasing the level of connectivity and making that truly a cloud-connected IoT device, the, the, the general direction is all of our devices will be cloud-connected IoT devices. Not all of them are yet. Some of them are with Bluetooth, some of them are with Wi-Fi, but you'll see more and more of that where a device that's not connected to our backend, that's not connected to our cloud, can't really be part of the ecosystem. So that that's kind of the, the second leg of the stool, if you will. So the hardware, the uh, the connectivity, and the third piece is the the software, both on the devices and and in the cloud, that the sort of provide the glue that unifies everything. And and you know we were talking about this earlier. <laughs> the fly is, we have to see all the comments here. that are going to come out. The fly, fly on the wall is here. Yeah. Wants to be. Yeah, the fly's I on wonder that. who that is, right? The fly. There's always someone who says, "I wish I could be a fly on the wall." Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no, but we, we we were talking about this earlier. Uh, both uh, iRadar and Escort Live have been, you know, part of the company's DNA for six, seven years. And so we're not inventing that for the first time. We're not reinventing the wheel for that matter. We're just taking that, elevating it. And when you put these three pieces together, really strong hardware foundations that fundamentally provide sensor, inf sensory information, um, a strong connectivity backbone that, that links everything together, and a unifying set of software pieces, both on the devices and on the cloud, that's what's 
what builds this network that is cross-brand, cross-devices, cross-application, and really, really delivers on the product is the information. Yeah. So that's how the vision sort of comes together. We break it up into these three components. We have a unified product and, and engineering team, and you know we're we're working, uh, you know, one one step at a time. We're not we're not going to you know do it all all at once. We're taking incremental steps, but we're always keeping in mind sort of how do all the pieces fit, fit together, and where are we now relative to an initial step that will get yeah. us to where well, we really yeah, want. Yeah, as Ariel, as we were telling you earlier, I think the other good news that that we discovered when we came in as a new team was, you know, we came in with with kind of well thought through rationalized strategy of how we wanted to go down this path, but with this notion of you're essentially going to be starting from square one. And and like I told you earlier, we we're so pleased to find out that you we were know, wrong between, about that. Yeah, no, that, that okay, you had iRadar and you had Escort Live, right? They weren't merged, they were separate entities, and there's challenges in user experience with both and we need to we need to up level and, and improve both of those. Uh, both separately and together, and you're going to hear more about that in, in the coming months going forward as well. But they were already there, right? So there was already this notion of connectivity and the importance of connectivity, starting with Bluetooth and then kind of going to Wi-Fi in the high end. So connectivity was there. So the, the importance of information, the importance of the database, the importance of the app, the importance of, like you and I talked about earlier, embracing the smartphone as an enabler of, of detection technology when I know so many folks are afraid, no, the, the smartphone is going to kill the radar detector. We view it fundamentally different. We're like, no, the, the smartphone is the absolute companion that actually makes radar detectors more relevant in the market as long as you're, as long as you're using the information um, and in disseminating it to users appropriately, um, it's an enabler, not a detractor or kind of the, the death knell for the device. So we had the apps, we had the databases, we had some level of pre-existing uh, connectivity um, in the product portfolio. Um, it just, it was kind of random, right? And it wasn't, they all kind of seemed to be skunk work type projects versus having really think about, there's, there's the, the, the genesis of some really great ideas and a great overall technology strategy here that no one had just really kind of connected the dots on and then really focused and invested on. And so, you know, what I, what I told Manuel when I was begging him to join me when, when I joined the company was, I said, look, here's the good news. You know, I thought it was going to be kind of like on a, a zero or one step and a 10 step process to get to get the, the product portfolio and the technology where we really need it. I said, the good news is, where to at least at a three, I don't know, we might already be at a four. But the foundational base, the core of the technology strategy is already here. It's just been underinvested in, underfocused, underprioritized for the last three to four years. And if we bring it to the surface, not only just appropriately prioritized, but prioritized almost, you know, at the highest level, um, or at least at a minimum at the same level that we're prioritizing, you know, development of discrete devices, like our ability to accelerate and get to the end game of, of where we want to go is is so much closer in the, the windshield, pardon the pun, um, than, than what we really initially envisioned. So we envision much more of a three to four year type of technology journey to get to where we want to go. And I think we're fine, you know, this is like a 24 to 36 month um, type of, of journey for us because, again, all of the, the foundational elements, the backbone of the strategy was already here. It was interesting, like, listening to you guys talk about how everything integrates. Like, when I look at these things, I really like the whole thing of how the product is the information and the alert, not so much the detector itself. Because before, I was looking at it and saying, okay, well, the product is the radar detector. How does it compare to other radar detectors? Or a dash cam, or the product is the dash cam. How does it compare to others? Or the app, Escort Live. How does it compare to Waze or any other one? But it's interesting if you start looking at the bigger picture of how they all talk. It's like, okay, well, the radar detector can talk to not only other radar detectors, but then it can talk to other dash cams. It can talk to CB radio users. Right. Somebody who's running maybe a Cobra dash cam, but not a radar detector, if they don't want to run a radar detector, they're illegal in the area. Yep. They can get the alerts on their dash cam and they can manually report alerts from the dash cam or a truck driver. Yep. If they can't run a radar detector, they can still get the benefit of the alerts. And that's nice to see like yeah. how everything actually starts working together. And even things like, yeah, you can run Waze and that's really cool, but you have to manually report alerts or if you want to do it hands-free for safety, yep. you know, you can do it with your voice, but it kind of works. Sometimes it's tough with the road noise and stuff. Yep. Escort Live, you get the alert and it's automated. It just reports to the cloud and it's done. Yep. The lockouts are automatic. There's a lot of like, 
integration and automation here that I really like that while there's other options, a lot of the things are tying together really nicely. The Wi-Fi stuff, the updates are now being done automatically for you. Yep. So you don't have to bring it back and plug it into your computer. So like seeing all the stuff kind of tie together, the bigger picture, it's starting to make a lot more sense of how everything works together as opposed to focusing on just a radar detector or just a dash cam or just right. an app. Like it starts to make a lot more sense that way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you, you kind of highlight a lot of the, the, the great use cases. So if you look at like CB radios, right? 98% of, of all like class six through eight vehicles have a CB radio, one or more. Um, you know, I think roughly two thirds um, of those are, are running on on Cobra CB radios, and and it's not legal for those long haul truckers to have detection devices, but they would still like some level of detection and, and information. And you know, like I was telling you earlier, I think it was probably a great day in American long haul trucking when we actually merged the iRadar and Escort databases because there was more rich data, and the Escort database both contributed to to total user count in in um, total combined information, um, but which everyone won from. But disproportionately, you know, for truckers who are running a 29 LX Max with Bluetooth connectivity, they just picked up an active network of three and a half million registered users in, in iRadar and in Escort Live detector users to kind of clear a path for them on the road. So they've got some level, they don't actually have the detector, they don't have that, that additional level of discrete device security in their cab because they can't, but they, they've got what we consider the next best thing. And so, um, you know, that could be true of, of truckers with that, that could be true of anyone um, with uh, who's running a, a Cobra dash cam or going forward as, as Escort gets more into the to the dash camera business. We're just opening up the, the universe of detection from an information standpoint broader than we think the actual market from that detection is from a device standpoint. So it's almost, not to get hokey, but it's the democratization of, of detection, right? Not everyone in America is going to run a radar detector. They never have, they not never will. Oh, they right? too much. I don't want to run one. Yeah, it, still get it's, benefits from it. it's much more of a, you know, a um, an enthusiast, driver enthusiast type of product, and that's fine. But it still doesn't mean we don't want to find a way to take some of the benefits that those enthusiasts reap and find a way to disseminate that information and that benefit to a broader group and that's all about connectivity and that's that's all about all about the community and, and you know where it actually then comes back to a device level and I'll shamelessly point to our uh, limitless uh, range uh, statement we have back there is it actually helps the discrete user right so if you've got a max 360c top of the line you got long range you've got great sensitivity and accuracy with the patented IVT filtering so you've got a great device right here but like you and I were talking about earlier if you get nailed by instant on radar or laser um, all of that was great but you're still caught unless you're running the app and you're part of the community and you see that someone got nailed by instant on or laser 15 minutes before you five miles up the road so that you've already slowed down and started to drive more safely so even the power user can benefit from from the broader uh, the broader community and it's not just about folks who don't want to have radar detectors getting the benefit of, of detection but um, you know the other point you raised I think is is um, is valid as well is there's uh, been some thought or, or feedback of you know are you guys trying to outweigh ways and we're like yeah, but we're never gonna outweigh ways and yeah. We we have uh, we have big aspirations, but we're not stupid. Yeah, um, you're not going. At least to. I don't think we are. Yeah, um, yeah. Game, right? we might it's be stupid. Not, not, uh, um, but no, it, it, so we're not out trying to outweigh Waze. We're playing a fundamentally different game than Waze. So Waze is definitely about you know crowdsourcing and community, which is a common element to ours. But it's fundamentally about user input, um, which which we think there, there's kind of two critical flaws with that in a, in a driving application that are important. One is user reported information is, is always potentially inaccurate, right? I think I saw blue stuff, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. Maybe that one's been, it's been reported, but hasn't really been verified. So um, to kind of walk back from, uh, from user reported data and really focus on sen pure sensor driven data, sensors that don't lie, um, is a unique differentiating uh, point of where we're trying to go with, with our community and our application and our database. The other one though is by virtue of this being sensor driven, it's all automated, which means there's no distracted driving, right? You're not, 
punching around. Yeah, right. yeah, just exactly. like you, you brought up, it's distracted driving is, is an epidemic, and you know part of, of what we're trying to do in both Escort and Cobra is keep drivers safer to drive smarter. And a lot of that has to do with not only keeping them informed of you know, hazards and alerts on the road, but it's to keep them focused on driving and not being distracted. And so in that way, being more sensor driven, so what we call more fact-based reporting, um, and then also being, um, being uh, automated so that you're, you're not uh, distracted, we're, we're becoming more part of the solution than part of the, the problem that you see kind of epidemically out on the road. That's nice. I'm also curious, I guess, maybe moving like, as far as maybe bringing this to, bring to us as customers, as far as the operation side and kind of, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, How is so, it all going? Yeah, so everything for us is all about safety. Uh -huh. So everything is looking at what consumers want, helping them make good decisions. So one of the things we're doing is actually limiting our product offering so that it's easier for the consumers to understand what differentiates our products. Like having what's, fewer radar detectors? Exactly. What's the right product for them? Making more decisions so that there's less confusion in the marketplace. Um, and ensuring that they have safe devices that partner with other devices going to the whole community and the information. Sorry, you guys are going to yeah. You know, so that's our focus. Our focus is, you know, ensuring that we hear what consumers are saying. What do they want in products? Looking forward, because sometimes they don't see what should be coming two, three years in ahead. So giving them what they need today and innovating, and that's where Manny's been great with the team of looking at what the future could be. And there's there's actually a very interesting linkage that that you know ties. Gain all, gain myself at the hip in terms of how how we implement some of the hardware capabilities. So going to more unified, common set of building blocks and and components that not only give us the products that we need from a hardware standpoint, but that from an operational supply chain and vendor management are easier to deal with. So. I mean, the concept of product families or, or product platforms is not something we, you know, invented or came up with, right? We're just applying it, right? So if we can if we can have a common set of components for dash cameras and be able to build four different variant SKUs off of the same core building block, gives us not only more flexibility to provide what what consumers really want. It makes us nimbler and to be able to adapt when we get it wrong and we say, oh, that was not quite the right mix. We need to do something different. And and it it makes Gail and her teams fly from a from a uh, operational supply chain manufacturing standpoint much much simpler, mm -hmm. right? So there's there's like a nice you know. Yeah, uh, I mean, what, what's most letter. important in all this to be a successful business, you got to you got to take care of the consumer. You got to take care of the end customer and I think from from this standpoint it, it's really going to help um, you know existing and future escort and cover users from from two standpoints one is getting to more of kind of the simplified good better best type of product roadmap makes the purchasing decision a lot easier to make right I mean we've, we've got we've got a lot of different products out on the market yeah uh, right now and and you know we're, we're looking to streamline that portfolio going forward so that we can get to a much more simplified uh, purchasing experience where people are like, okay, I, I'm a good person or I'm a better person or I like the best of everything, I'm best, but it's selecting that product is very simple. So that that simplifies back end and operations and supply chain and all that good stuff, but, but ultimately it really benefits the consumers. They can go on your website or any other website and, and see you know, a very simplified product portfolio, decide exactly what they want and move on down the road versus looking at it, getting frustrated, not knowing the difference between this What's one and that one and this and the other and then, then, then. This and that. So, so it helps from that standpoint. Um, you know, I think with, with members of, of your community where it also helps is it's clearly, you know, the IBT filter updates, database update, et cetera, those are very, very important, right? New CAS and ADAS systems are coming out all the time, and your systems need to be constantly updated. Almost every time there's a new automobile release, you know, we got to take the engineers back into the lab and analyze the signals. Are we already filtering this, or is this a new ADAS or CAS 
um, technology, how are we filtering that out, etc. So you got to do all of that anyway, but, but rolling that out over a simplified good, better, best product roadmap is a heck of a lot easier than it is rolling it off across 20 different products that all have different platform architectures, um, memory and, and computing capability um, to a point where you know you say, well, they would all ultimately need to be updated, but these don't have the memory capacity anymore to take an update of this size. These don't have the CPU processing capability to process now um, filtering algorithms of, of this size. And so you kind of end up with more complexity on top of the complexity that already existed before. That and so sense, yeah. a simplified roadmap of core common building blocks actually enables us to come back and do the software and firmware enabled features that your viewers like um, and, and are so important to them. It makes us so much more fast um, and efficient and effective in delivering those to the market because now it really is just about analyzing that signal rolling out a firmware patch into good, better, bet. In fact, now it probably doesn't even need to be three patches, it's just one, because they're all on a, on a they're common. They're on the same platform. They're all so on the same platform. Now patch. they might have different an antennas, you know, so one might be an M4 Plus, one might be an M7, you know, what, what have you. So maybe the actual good, better, best is differentiated from, from an antenna technology perspective. But the rest of it, your memory footprint, um, your digital signal processing capability, if those are all identical, then you're going to be processing all of these, these IBT filter updates ubiquitously. And then, if you can throw in the connectivity of the strategy, oh, by the way, these are always on connected device, yeah. you don't now have to you go just on. Push the update. Yeah, you don't, yeah. you just, you're getting it over the air, um, either via your vehicle Wi Fi hotspot or even if you don't have a vehicle Wi Fi hotspot, but you have it hooked up to your house when you pull into the garage, you can get your updates you know, just from Wi-Fi of your house, even if you're not running it always on. So all of this gets a lot more simple, which makes Gail's life a lot easier because this is so much easier to manage from an operation perspective. But I would say even more important than that though, it makes the customer experience so much better and so much easier. Which product to buy? How do I get my updates? What are the relevance and frequency of those updates? All of this gets so much better than it is right now as we get further along in, in the execution of the strategy. I think that's a great idea across the board to simplify the lineup for supply chain, for updates, for choosing what detector to buy. I agree 100%. That's a great idea. So. Cool, well, this is great. I guess maybe the last thing, do we have any more nuggets you guys can share? Or so far this has been good? Well, we got a lot of nuggets. I don't yeah. know what all, what all <laughs> we're, we're in a, yeah, we're, we're full of nuggets. Um, no, we're, uh, we'll be uh, back in, we're in the North Hall again at yeah, CES, right? Yeah, so we'll, 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 we'll be well. back in this uh, hallowed hall here in a couple yeah. months and we'll have um, the, uh, you'll learn, learn and see more about the connectivity strategy, the video strategy, uh, the convergence strategy. We've got we got a lot more uh, yeah, the, interesting things to, to show. We're excited about rolling out the IXC and getting getting Wi-Fi down into the mid range of, of the Escort lineup um, this week. So we're super excited about that. There's been a lot of buzz and excitement around the the M1 cam. Um, so so that's great. Um, expect a fundamental turn of that crank at, at CES, where we're really going to get the next turn of the crank in terms of. Um, the back end, the database, the apps, um, new connected uh, devices in the portfolio that, that are, are product categories we're not even in today. So we'll have uh, some interesting things to share, for sure. Great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you guys have a CES, and thanks for sitting down thank and you. sharing we'll with be, everybody. We'll be thanks. back. All right. Yeah, cool. All right. Bye. Bye, guys. You guys ready? All right. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. We guys, were ready. Are you guys do like most, mostly B2B, like vehicle it, it can. We're getting, yeah, we're getting we ready to do an interview. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Come join us for the interview. Yes. <laughs> we do have B2B. Do so listen in. We actually do B2B. Okay. <laughs> I'll find you. I'll find you. I, I have the Passport Max, so I think it's a really nice unit.